exercises. Number one, one should perhaps ask why even very simple animals would prefer familiar stimuli or familiar other animals. A tendency to grow fond of the familiar would help stamp in the preference for a stable environment, so animals might learn to like their homes. It would certainly promote stable social bonds. Imagine, for example, that nature programmed animals in the opposite way, so that familiarity led to contempt or some other form of disliking. How would families stay together? How would friendships, alliances, or other partnerships survive? If you always preferred a stranger to someone you knew, social life would be in constant turmoil and turnover. In contrast, if you automatically grew to like the people you saw regularly, you would soon prefer them over strangers, and groups would form and stabilize easily. Given the advantages of stable groups, e.g., people know each other, know how to work together, know how to make decisions together, know how to adjust to each other, it is not surprising that nature removed animals that grew to like rather than dislike each other on the basis of familiarity. Exercises, number one. One should perhaps ask why even very simple animals would prefer familiar stimuli or familiar other animals. A tendency to grow fond of the familiar would help stamp in the preference for a stable environment, so animals might learn to like their homes. It would certainly promote stable social bonds. Imagine, for example. That nature programmed animals in the opposite way, so that familiarity led to contempt or some other form of disliking. How would families stay together? How would friendships, alliances, or other partnerships survive? If you always preferred a stranger to someone you knew, social life would be in constant turmoil and turnover. In contrast. If you automatically grew to like the people you saw regularly, you would soon prefer them over strangers, and groups would form and stabilize easily. Given the advantages of stable groups, e.g., people know each other, know how to work together, know how to make decisions together, know how to adjust to each other, it is not surprising that nature removed animals that grew to like. Rather than dislike each other on the basis of familiarity. Number two, social psychologist Irving Janis recognized the problem of groupthink. But felt that it could be avoided. It is most likely to develop when team spirit becomes more important than the opinions of individual members. It's also likely to form if the group is made up of like-minded people to begin with, and if they are faced with a difficult decision. To prevent groupthink, Janus proposed a system of organization that encourages independent thinking. The leader of the group should appear to be impartial, so that members do not feel any pressure to obey. Furthermore, he or she should get the group to examine all the options, and to consult people outside the group too. Agreement, Janice argued, is actually a good thing, and he suggested that members should be asked to play devil's advocate. Introducing an alternative point of view in order to provoke discussion, in addition to ensuring that the group comes to more rational and fair decisions, allowing members to retain their individuality creates a healthier team spirit than the state of groupthink, which results from conformity and obedience. Number two, 
Social psychologist Irving Janis recognized the problem of groupthink, but felt that it could be avoided. It is most likely to develop when team spirit becomes more important than the opinions of individual members. It's also likely to form if the group is made up of like-minded people to begin with, and if they are faced with a difficult decision. To prevent groupthink, Janus proposed a system of organization that encourages independent thinking. The leader of the group should appear to be impartial, so that members do not feel any pressure to obey. Furthermore, he or she should get the group to examine all the options. And to consult people outside the group too, agreement. Janus argued is actually a good thing, and he suggested that members should be asked to play devil's advocate, introducing an alternative point of view in order to provoke discussion. In addition to ensuring that the group comes to more rational and fair decisions, allowing members to retain their individuality creates a healthier team spirit. Than the state of groupthink, which results from conformity and obedience. Number three, the alternative world provided by cyberspace. Is essentially an ideal private world in which each person controls the information that is revealed. In this world, the full identity of the person is not revealed, and the two people are physically remote from each other. Hence, it is much easier to keep private whatever areas the participants so wish. These circumstances do not lead the participants to remain completely mysterious. On the contrary. In many cases, it leads the participants to reveal much more about themselves than they would usually do. When we can keep private that which seems to threaten us, we can be more open concerning other matters. The greater degree of openness generates a greater degree of emotional closeness as well. Accordingly, in online relationships, we can find both greater privacy and greater closeness and openness. This considerably maximizes the common conflict between openness and privacy. Number three. The alternative world provided by cyberspace is essentially an ideal private world in which each person controls the information that is revealed. In this world, the full identity of the person is not revealed, and the two people are physically remote from each other. Hence, it is much easier to keep private whatever areas the participants so wish. These circumstances do not lead the participants to remain completely mysterious. On the contrary, in many cases, it leads the participants to reveal much more about themselves than they would usually do. When we can keep private that which seems to threaten us, we can be more open concerning other matters. The greater degree of openness generates a greater degree of emotional closeness as well. Accordingly, in online relationships, we can find both greater privacy and greater closeness and openness. This considerably maximizes the common conflict between openness and privacy. Number four, people often have different definitions of education, as the nature of education is somewhat fluid. Nearly six hundred years ago, the printing press changed the way much of education occurred. Students began reading information coupled with the information a teacher would share. To ensure that the student had retained the information, a test or paper was often required to make an assessment of that retention. 
This downloading of information is known as the banking model. And what the banking model does is it reduces the student from being a critical and independent thinker to being a receptacle for facts. The process of the banking model raises the power and control of the teacher, while failing to recognize that students are more than simply unthinking blank slates. The concept then is placed squarely into the minds of students. Who are taught that they are subservient and beholden to the keeper of information. As a result, students have considerable control over their own thinking and their own education. Number four. People often have different definitions of education, as the nature of education is somewhat fluid. Nearly six hundred years ago, the printing press changed the way much of education occurred. Students began reading information, coupled with the information a teacher would share, to ensure that the student had retained the information. A test or paper was often required to make an assessment of that retention. This downloading of information is known as the banking model, and what the banking model does is it reduces the student from being a critical and independent thinker to being a receptacle for facts. The process of the banking model raises the power and control of the teacher, while failing to recognize that students are more than simply unthinking blank slates. The concept then is placed squarely into the minds of students. Who are taught that they are subservient and beholden to the keeper of information. As a result, students have considerable control over their own thinking and their own education. <music>